Psalms 23, a psalm of David. This is a psalm of Israel while they're in the wilderness running from the Antichrist, being away from him. As that point when Jesus said, when you see the abomination, desolation, being the holy place, run. The Lord is my shepherd. Well, there's an idle shepherd, the Bible speaks about, in Jerusalem. And Israel is saying, the Lord Jehovah is my shepherd. Not that guy back there in Jerusalem. Not the one sitting in the temple right now. I shall not want. When they get down to the cell of Petra, when they get to where God wants them, Revelation 12, God's going to take care of them. God's going to give them. What's the Bible keep on saying? With food and raiment, be content. They're not going to have iPhones down there. They're not going to have video games. They're not going to have automobiles. They're not going to have electronics. They're going to have just food and raiment. By God. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I am told as far as sheep, you have to make them lie down. Lying down for them is not natural. Green pastures is a place where it's very fruitful, very much grass, very much that the, that the sheep are going to want to eat, 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 till they make themselves bloated. And the, the sheep are going to see that green pasture. Yum, 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 yum. No, lay down. Lay down. I want to eat this grass. Lay down. There are some Christians, there are some pastors out there who love the Lord and want to do right and they want to feed it, and they're feeding their flock and they're taking care. But God's got to tell them, say, lay down. Oh, no, no, I got to go here. Lay down. Elijah was like that. Elijah needed rest. He needed to, to take a sleep. He needed to have a little bit of food that God provided for him. But he didn't get. He didn't take all that God gave him. There are men behind the pulpits that you know what God says: just lay down, relax. Why did God put our pastor in in the hospital? Well, God didn't probably do it. The pastor just running and being too busy, being active, and maybe God thought that's the you know. That's the only way he's going to get rest. He leadeth me beside the still water. A place of drink, a place of food. Again, I am told by a, a person who worked sheep and all that, that sheep will come to the water. If it moves, they're afraid. It has to be still water. It can't be water that, that's rushing. It can't be water that has waves. and can't be turbine water. Listen, when, when they're on the boat and Jesus Christ is at the end of the boat falling asleep, the troubled water's got all the sheep upset. And when they came to Jesus, who is God, go, you know, grab a bucket, get the water out, and they never asked to come to see them. Read it. They wanted him to start getting a bucket and start bailing. So, water and green pastures is what God's going to give the Jews. He restoreth my soul. Well, if you re if you receive the six six six, the mark in your hand or your forehead, you ain't got your soul no more. Is there a way that you could be saved after receiving that mark? I'm not gonna go there. I don't know. But if you if the Jew does not run to Salem, Peach, if he does not run to the wilderness. His soul will be damned. For, listen, there's going to be Jews that are going to follow the Antichrist. Believe me. They'll do whatever it takes, mark or not, in defiance of the law and the commandments so they can get by and make money and, and survive. By them running down to the wilderness, Revelation 12, their, their soul is going to be restored. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. God is going to tell that Jews the ones who do right. He, listen, they're going to head down there without a GPS. God is going to direct them somehow in some way to that spot where he's going to provide their needs. And it's going to be the paths of righteousness. 
I don't think you're going to have Jews or, or Antichrist agents down there to turn them in. Because the only ones that are going to head down there in the wilderness is the ones who want the path of righteousness for Jesus' name. Now, there may be people that walk by this city, walk by this wilderness, and see them down there and turn them in, but they won't probably end with the Jews themselves. Yea, that's what Satan said in Genesis 3 to man. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, And what do you think those Jews are going to be doing when they're running from the Antichrist? Some of them are going to get caught. It's a valley of shallow death. Some will be killed. Some will be brought back. Look at Paul and his life before he got converted. He was going all over the place to grab them and bringing them back to the priests. I will fear no evil. The Antichrist chasing them. For thou, God, art with me. So they're going to have something in them to know, you know what? What we're doing by running is right. We are going to the right place. We are doing what God wants us to do. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, not getting the big, great detail of studying all that, but that's Satan. Listen, the rod and staff that, that beat Job also comforted Job that in the end of what we read of Job's life, he got everything back double. And he got his children back. And who beat Job? Satan did. It says over in Ezekiel, speaking about Satan, that he's the battle axe. Some men think their wives are battle acts. You better be careful what you say. Satan is going to drive the Jews down to the wilderness. Or else they wouldn't be there. They wouldn't be running. Read Revelation chapter 12. It's the dragon that's chasing them. Thou preparest a table before me and the princes of my enemies. Knowing that would be Genesis 48, 15. Listen, when they go down to sell a pizza, they're right in the smack middle of all the, all the enemies. Read about Judah when he went into captivity. When you get books like um, the Minor Prophets there, I can't think of the one right now. Oh, when it speaks about Edom. And the prophet says, "Listen, you, you, when, when the Jews ran out, of, it went, ran out of Jerusalem. When they ran out of Judea, they ran down towards Edom, and Edom stopped them right at the water course. They stopped them, and they brought some of them to Babylon, and they taunted and they harassed the Jews. Ha ha ha! Look who you are! Ha 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 ha! And oh, I believe it's Obadiah. I'm not sure now. That's that's a name that came to my head. Maybe that was the Lord, or maybe that's just my own." Not knowledge. And they're, they're going to be smack in the middle. Listen. There are nations that are helping the Jews that Jesus tells us in Matthew 25. And they don't even know they're doing it. You think Israel has enemies today. You wait till they're right in the middle of the Antichrist. When the entire world will turn against them. I don't even know what the number of the Jews are going to be in the in, in the wilderness, thousands. You ain't looking at millions. I don't know. I think millions is going to be just too much of a number. Thou annoyest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. They are God's people no matter what. They will always be God's people. They are the anointed. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Run that to Psalms 27.4. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Right in the middle of the, of the tribulation towards the end. 
The seven years will end one day, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And when Jesus Christ comes and sets up that that millennium kingdom, the, the temple and the worship and all that, it, listen, despite the fact is the earth and heavens, all that will dissolve, and then you'll have Revelation 20, the great white throne judgment. Then you go to the new earth the Jew will get, and forever he'll dwell in the house of the Lord. With no Satan, no no sin. And complete what they want, that land that God promised them with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No more enemies. There will be no more enemies as there was in verse 5. Enemies will all be gone in eternity. Psalm 23 is a cute little psalm. Everybody knows, everybody learns, but you better realize, again, it's about the Jew in the tribulation, once they find out that that is the Antichrist, that is Satan, whoever what they want to know, and when Jesus said, you need to run. Other passages you should run to is Ezekiel 34, 11 through 13. Um, Jeremiah 35, 19. It's a very important passage. They'll turn from, some will turn from the idle shepherd to the shepherd, John chapter 10. And when you study John chapter 10, verse 11 and all that, Jesus said about the door, the porter opens it. That's all, that's all prophecy. That's all later to happen. The sheep hear my voice. Somehow they're going to get, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. Somehow they're going to know where to go, how to go, why to go, and everything else. Who, what, where, when, and why. And the Bible speaks when they get in Salem, Peter, that, that ain't going to be a happy uh, serving ground. They're, the Bible speaks they're going to have to go get their food like they did the manna. But in the wilderness, there was they went out in the morning, they grabbed their manna, they grabbed what they were, and they baked it and cooked it and everything. But the Bible speaks about when they're going to do this, get, go in the wilderness, get their food. The shadow of death is going to be around. There's a possibility some are going to go out and get the food and they're not going to come back. The shadow of death. It's an interesting study to study in the Bible as we close this chapter. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take.